Hello, everyone. This is News Now from the Belmont Journal, and we're joined by Joanna Jubilis of the Belmont Citizen Herald for our regular weekly update on the Belmont News. And I'm your host, Mike Crowley. So it's great to see you again, Joanna. Thank you, Michael. So flight patterns around Boston Logan continue to, to pose a noise challenge for some Belmont residents. Do we have an update on the problem and potential solutions, Joanna? We do, Mike. This is a problem that's been going on for eight years now, since, since 2013. Uh, people living in Belmont all of a sudden started noticing the sounds of airplanes more as early as 4.30 in the morning. And this led to the formation of the Logan Community Advisory Committee, which is led by Myron Casaraba, a local resident, and he's been working with um, 33 other communities affected by this. This is all because the FAA changed the flight paths of planes taking off from runway 33L at Rogan, Logan Airport. Um, just to, because they started using GPS for their okay. Flights. So that's what, that's what led to all of this additional noise, a change of the flight paths. Before, flight paths were more dispersed, but then all of a sudden they became more concentrated, which is why we all are hearing airplane noise more frequently. And this, this didn't just affect Belmont, it affected many other communities. So like I said, Myron has been working with these other communities. They've been going back and forth with the FAA. They've had legisl legislative res representatives helping them. They've been working with an MIT, uh, Dr. John Hansman from the Department of Aeronautics and Astronautics. He's been uh, working on different options for flight paths and they actually presented five options to the FAA of different paths that would be more dispersed. However, the FAA rejected every single one of them. Hmm. So they went back to the drawing board and now there's another option which the FAA will be voting on actually the Massport CAC it's called will be we will be voting on this in October. Now if people want to learn more about this they need to get on a Zoom Thursday night this Thursday night and we'll put the link up on the screen there's a Zoom meeting to uh, show you what this new path is. And what's important to know about it, according to Myron, is that it, it's actually going to potentially make the airplane noise worse in Belmont for people. So for people who are already experiencing airplane noise, it, will, it potentially will get louder. And if you haven't been affected by the airplane noise, like let's say you're living in my neighborhood, guess what? If this gets approved, you're gonna start hearing the airplanes because they're changing the flight paths again. They're not going to be dispersed. The way, the way, um, the way Myron put it is, it's gonna make noise better for some, worse for others because you're basically moving noise from one group to another. That's basically how he put it. And he just, he doesn't wanna alarm people but he wants to make people aware of it and prepared because when they made the change in 2013, people were alarmed. They were not prepared. And that's why it was upsetting to people. But at least now they'll have a heads up. They'll know about it. But the, the good news, Mike, is that planes are becoming less noisy, believe it or not. Um, they're, the newer flight fleets are actually 50% quieter. And as they move from fo uh, you know, fossil fuel to electric, the, the noise will get less. I, I can't say when, but I can say, you know, hopefully that will be the case. So there are two important meetings this Thursday night and Monday night. There's uh, two important meetings about this topic for anyone that's concerned about the airplane noise in Belmont. All right, that sounds good, Joanna. So anybody who's, who's interested or worried um, should attend. Um, Ralph Jones, former selectman was honored with a proclamation on his resignation from the light board. What can you tell us, Joanna? Sure. Well, he, he actually served as a member of the Light Board Advisory Committee for three terms, 2014 to 2021, and he decided it's time to retire. He, he announced that he will not seek reappointments because his term is expiring. And he basically said he thinks it's time for a younger member with more relevant experience um, 
the, the issues that Belmont Light faces to take his position. He, he believes his most important contributions came during the debate over uh, what was called the 115 uh, KB project. I'm not sure what that stands for these technical terms, but he was presented with a proclamation Monday night at the select board meeting, recognizing him for his years of service and multiple contributions. He's very humble about this, receiving this proclamation. He said um, he was very pleased to be involved with the new substation and transmission line project, which doubled the energy capacity, you know, for Belmont Light. And, um, you know, he, he believes other people deserve credit as well. It's, it's not all, you know, his, not all his doing. All right. So moving on, the site for a replacement skating rink on the new middle and high school campus has been settled, but questions remain about how to fund it. What's the story with that? Well, Mike, they are looking for people to appoint to a rink funding committee. They announced this on Monday night as well, the select board meeting. Patrice Garvin, our town administrator, is drafting a charge for this committee. It will consist of seven members, including a representative from the school committee and Belmont Youth Hockey. And the goal of the group is to present funding strategy, strategies for the Scheme 2 rink that was recently approved by the school committee. So um, what they hope to do is that this fall at a special town meeting um, to create a rink building committee. They hope to bring that to the fall town meeting. That's the goal of this committee. Okay, and so uh, citizens will be serving on this committee as well as potentially, yes. Town okay. Yes, um, they don't have the charge drafted yet, but as soon as they do, it'll be, it'll be publicized and people can apply through the town website like you apply for all committees and then the select board will make the appointments. There's, there's also, um, people they're looking for to serve on the Solid Waste and Recycling Management Working Committee, another committee that will consist of eight members who are uh, concerned about how the town disposes of its wastes and, you know, how we recycle. And because our current contract that we have expires in 2023. So they want to have a working group who will study how are things going now? How can we make them better? for the whole solid waste and recycling program in Belmont. And also there's more news, one more thing. Okay. Um, anyone who is interested in the fuel tank replacement project, which was- So what you're saying, Joanna, is that after two nights of discussion at our recent town meeting, the issue isn't settled. No, it's not, it's not. So they're going to have a community forum on Tuesday, August 3rd at 7 p.m. I believe it'll be in the town hall auditorium. And it's basically to discuss options for the fuel tank replacement, which has to happen because as everybody knows, our, our current fuel tanks are not insured. That's important. All right, so- um, Look into what, what are the options for these? Should we you know, get smaller above ground tanks? Should we replace them with underground tanks? I think. They, they want to, the goal is to make all tanks above ground to avoid um, spillage and pollution that has happened before. I believe uh, Burbank had an underground fuel tank that leaked and, and actually leaked into Clay Pit Pond. This was years All right, that's an issue that, that has generated lots of community interest. So it's good that there will oh, be a yes. public forum. Oh, yes. Because guess what, Mike? What's that? It'll probably be back at fall town meeting, the, the whole fuel tank vote. I, I would expect that. It still needs a solution. Yes. All right. Well, thank you, Joanna. And um, we're looking forward to talking about the news yeah. next time. So you can find out more news from the Belmont Citizen Herald at belmont.wickedlocal.com. You've been watching the Belmont Journal's News Now. I'm Mike Crowley, and we'll see you next time.